Good morning, guys. It's Monday. It's the first day of booktube -thon. It's finally upon us. We're doing this. I feel like this is probably going to be a super boring reading vlog, but I feel like I have to vlog booktube -thon. It's such a big booktube event, and I'm really excited about it. Like I said, it's Monday morning right now, and so far, all I've done is just like kind of lounge around in bed, listening a little bit to my audiobook, but mostly kind of dozing off. I'm just tired. But what else is new? If you've ever watched one of my reading vlogs, this is the norm for me. <laughs> it's just been me and my bird like hanging out in my bed all morning, which is nice. And I have started Ella Enchanted, which is the first book that I have to read as decided by the coin toss, which is good because it's the book that I wanted to start out with. And I'm not super far into it so far, but I am very much enjoying it. The audiobook narrator, I think like is a kid or at least does a very, very childish voice. And I just really, really like the protagonist. She's so wonderful. Today I have to work, but that's not for a little while. So I have to go get ready, make some food, try to read as much as I can. And that's about it. Hello friends, it is Tuesday, day two of Booktubeathon. I need to update you on what's been going on because I've been reading a lot, which is so good. Yesterday was Monday. I didn't do much, but I did read a lot, went to work. After I got home from work, I finished Ella Enchanted. I read that whole book that day. It was super good. I think I'll go into my full thoughts on Ella Enchanted a little bit later because I'm in the car. It's kind of hot right now. Me and this puppy over here are going to the dog park. We're here, so she wants to get out and, and go to the dog park. Um, so we'll go there in just a second, but I wanted to let you know where I was at today. I woke up super early this morning. Don't know why, I just did. And I started reading One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I am very much enjoying that book as well. I flew through it. I am currently 72% done with the audiobook. So getting really close with that one. And it's only the afternoon right now and I have all evening, like the rest of the day to read. So I definitely think I'll be able to finish that one today, maybe read another book or get like a good chunk of another book done today, which is good because it's my day off today. So I need to get ahead of the game today before I go back to work tomorrow. But now, like I said, I'm at the dog park. So me and Hazel are going to go play with some puppies. It's very hot out, so she's probably gonna get tired, but she really wants to go play with some other dogs. So I'm going to sit and listen to my audiobook and she is going to have a good time and I will update you later and I will tell you my full thoughts on LNJ I did when I'm not in a hot car with a puppy. All right. What up guys? I'm just doing a face mask before I take a shower. That's very normal. <laughs> Today is Wednesday. It is Wednesday afternoon and I sadly am getting ready. I have to go to work tonight so Pretty much I'm done with my reading for today, and I didn't finish a book today, so I guess now I'm behind. But at the moment, I am reading Damselfly, which I am enjoying so far. It is very much like teenagers stranded on a desert island, like classic survival story. There's a little bit of like a creepy twist to it, and we have the fancy prep school dynamics going on and I'm enjoying it. I like the survival story aspect and I really, really like the writing. It is so good. I am currently 34% done with that one. So got a ways to go, but you know, I'm a good third into it. I also started Let's Talk About Love by Claire Kahn last night. I am 21% done with that one. So not quite as far, but you know, I've made it a little dent in that one. Honestly, Let's Talk About Love is not getting along with me as well as I hoped it would. Within the first 20 minutes of the audiobook, we had already heard the word floofy and squee, so it's just like a little cringy for me to be totally honest. It's very much one of those books that's like about a certain issue and they talk about that thing in depth. So right now this book is mostly this character talking about being asexual. The book itself, like as a book, is not really that enjoyable so far. It's like okay, but I'm not finding too much that I love about it yet, sadly. 
Yesterday I did finish One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which was a very addictive, fun book. I solidly liked that book, but I wouldn't say I loved it. I thought it was well written, the characters were good, the story was obviously compelling, so it was definitely like delivered most of the things that I wanted from it. I had a fun time reading it. I will say that I kind of wanted more drama and tension. I was kind of hoping for like a, a like dramatic uh, push and pull and you would like want one character to end up with the main character and then it would surprise you. But I actually felt most of the time reading that book that whatever man she was like in favor of was just like on board. I was like, yeah, I agree. <laughs> so it didn't really have that like dramatic tension for me as much as I wanted. It was still good. As someone that doesn't really like romance, this book was very centered on relationships. If you aren't interested in a book like that, I would not recommend. Um, and honestly, it was a little bit too like relationship centered for me, but I still liked it. I gave that one like 3.5 stars, I think. And then I also haven't like fully wrapped up uh, Ella Enchanted, which I read on the first day. I read that on Monday and I thought that was also really good, but I wouldn't say I loved it as much as I was expecting to. Usually with like children's books like that, that I kind of have a knowledge of and I already have like positive feelings toward, I, I can really easily fall in love with a kid's book like that. But I wouldn't say I totally fell in love with Ella Enchanted. I just found it to be a little bit too simple of a plot and again like the tension wasn't there. I felt like there wasn't really anything propelling the story forward and every time there was a conflict it was a very light conflict and the main conflict of the book was solved kind of easily and I don't know I just felt like there wasn't something carrying the book start to finish. It was kind of like individual problems that were solved pretty easily and it just went point by point forward and I don't know the plot of that book was just like not as gripping and well like executed as I expected it to be. What I will say is that I loved Ella as a protagonist and I thought she made an amazing heroine. She's so smart and spunky, she's very self-assured and such a good person and I think that she is such a good role model for kids. I loved her spirit and her personality and her alone is really what carried the book for me and what made me love it and I would recommend it based on Ella herself. I would especially recommend this book for kids because it has such an important message about being true to yourself and the importance of autonomy and when rebellion can be important. So I loved it for that reason and it was great. Again, I think I gave Ellen Shed to like 3.5 stars. Last night I got a little bit off track with my reading. I watched like the most recent episode of The Bachelor that I hadn't seen yet and then I still wasn't really in the mood to read so I decided to fulfill my movie portion of the book to movie challenge so I watched Ella Enchanted last night. It was such a good time. I was filled with happiness and joy and I forgot how much I love that movie. It is different from the book in many ways but I honestly think that movie gets a bad rap because <laughs> it changes the source material so much and it does not have the same spirit and energy that the book does and I definitely understand why fans of the book would hate the movie because of that because it really just doesn't stay true to the core of the book but the movie itself just like I love it and it has all of the cheese and musical numbers and romantic comedy tropes that I love. And I just love Anne Hathaway and Hugh Dancy so much. Although I will say that in the Ella Enchanted book, Prince Char is described like right off the bat as having dark skin. And that bothered me a little bit that he's white in the movie. Didn't know that was a thing until I read the book. Anyway, 
that's what I did Tuesday night and it was a good time. So now I need to go get ready for work and go to work. I at least made my way through the beginning of two other books, but I'm going to have to pick things up uh, tomorrow and finish two books in order to stay on track. I also realized that I started The Prince and the Dressmaker, which is a graphic novel by Jen Wang. I started this before Booktubeathon, and my library loan is going to expire in the next few days, so I'm going to need to finish that book during the week. So I guess I'm going to be reading eight books this week, ideally. We shall see how that goes. So that's another book that I'm going to have to be reading this week. I think that's it for now. I'll see you guys tomorrow, probably. Hey everybody, it is Thursday, day four of Booktubeathon, so the pressure is like really on now. <laughs> Good news, I finished a book today already. Today I finished Damselfly by Chandra Prasad and it was pretty good. Another like solid 3.5 star read for me. I think I mentioned that I really liked the writing in that book. It was evocative and beautiful prose. I was interested by the themes and characters and overall I just definitely enjoyed the stranded on a desert island story and the way that that was played with. The audiobook was really good. I liked the narrator a lot and it has like an interview with the author at the end of it which was nice um, and she talked about how she's mixed race and she really likes writing books about mixed race characters. If you're looking for like a survival desert island story I would definitely recommend this. Um, I thought it was a really solid book. Some of my criticisms against this book is that it's, a lot of it was just like a little bit too open-ended. One of the characters talks about how she loses her medication in the plane crash. She is going to be off her meds and she's worried about her mental health. She doesn't even say what mental illness she has. It's all very vague and the way that that journey unfurls and like ends was just um disappointing and I just felt like there needed to be more concrete details and more nuance to that discussion. There also were just like several aspects of the way that the book ended that um I felt like it all kind of like wrapped up super quickly and there were all of these dramatic things that happened at the end of the book and it's just never explained. So if you don't like ambiguity, maybe don't read this book. Um, it's not super ambiguous, but there are just, there are loose ends that are not going to be tied up. And it's, I don't know, just a little frustrating. Overall, I solidly enjoyed this. It was a good time. I really enjoyed the main character and her best friend Mel was a super interesting character. She was fantastic. Today I have another day off from work, which is nice, but it's also a little bit like I feel like the pressure is on that I need to get ahead in my reading today because for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, for the last days of the readathon, I'm working all of those days. So if I don't get a lot of reading in today, there's no way that I'm going to be able to finish book two Right now it is four o'clock in the afternoon, so I have the whole evening ahead of me. I think I, I'm gonna take a break from reading and I'm gonna film some videos because I'm really really behind on filming videos and uploading to my channel right now so I need to do that and then read some more. I started reading True and Nell a little bit ago and I'm 21% of the way through with that. It's not a super long audiobook so I'm hoping to finish this one fairly quickly. It is not really impressing me too much so far, but it's like an okay, nice kids book for now. But I'm not really hooked on that one. I have not really had the temptation to pick Let's Talk About Love back up, which is a little disappointing. I have seven hours left of this audiobook and I just like don't really feel like listening to it. And then I have uh, my graphic novel to get to, and I have not started I Know What You Did Last Summer yet. That one is gonna be, I think, my, my hat book, so 
Can you hear this airplane? I'm sure you can. That one's gonna be my hat book that I wear a hat for, and so I'm just kind of like not wanting to pick it up yet. But yeah, if I, if I finish one more book today, I'll be on track. So I'm hoping to maybe finish more than another book today. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I think I did mention earlier that I also need to finish The Prince and the Dressmaker um, in addition to my entire TBR, just cause that book is gonna expire from my library in a couple days. So I need to get that one done. Maybe I'll do that tonight as well. Okay, I think that's it. I'm pretty sure I warned you at the beginning of this whole vlog that it was not gonna be a super interesting one, but Hope you're enjoying this so far. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. Maybe when I finish another book, fingers crossed. Hello guys, it's later on Thursday. I am currently feeding my snake, Guthrie, which is taking forever because he's being a slow eater. And sadly, this would be really good audiobook time, but I've just like not been able to focus on the audiobooks that I'm currently listening to. It's very frustrating. So I've actually been <laughs> listening to podcasts instead, which is not the most productive use of my time for this readathon, but it's just what I've been in the mood for and what I've been able to focus on. But I've moved back to the books now. I think I got that out of my system. I'm currently a quarter of the way through True and Nell. I also started listening to I Know What You Did Last Summer, which means that I put on my stupid pig hat for that book. And I'm not very far into that one, like a little over a tenth of the way into that book. And so far it's boring. I'm just like bored by the characters and the story. I feel like I know already what they did last summer. It's not intriguing me. But it's like only 7.30 p.m. right now, so I think I'm gonna make dinner and keep at it with my books. Oh, and speaking of dinner, I'm not sure what I'm gonna make yet, but I'll make something for dinner and that can lead you to my my food montage of the week. Now my Readathon vlog tradition is to just show you guys my food montage, so here we go. Hey guys, so a wonderful miracle happened today. It's Friday today. I usually would be working on Fridays, but I went into work and it was really slow and my boss was like, Karen, why don't you just go home? Um, you can have the day off. So I have the whole night off. It's like eight o'clock PM right now. So I'm pretty much free for the rest of the night. I've been doing a puzzle, which has been really, really nice. Puzzles are just so good for readathons because you can just sit and listen to your audiobook and like do a puzzle for hours. So that's been very, very helpful. As of right now, I'm doing really, really well. I have less than an hour left to listen to on Let's Talk About Love. Honestly, this book is not been my favorite. I just like have been waiting for it to get better and like once I reached the halfway point I was kind of like confused that the book was halfway done and I felt like it was still in the early stages of setting up characters and relationships. And to me I'm just really not like feeling 
the connection between myself and the main character and the relationships that she's forming it's just like not really working for me it's it's not bad but it's just like really mediocre for me and honestly like if I didn't have this readathon I would not be reading it as quickly as I am I don't really feel like picking it up I've just kind of been forcing myself through it it's not horrible but meh but I'm gonna finish that one super soon I am currently almost halfway done with True and Nell which I should be able to finish quickly as well and then I'll finally be able to knock out I Know What You Did Last Summer. I also have started Backstagers and I'm not far into it but it's a really short graphic novel so that one should, probably shouldn't take too long either. I really really like what I've read so far. It's goofy and quirky and really really adorable. So yeah, tonight I got a free night which is amazing so I feel good that I should be able to finish a bunch of these books. Um, in the next couple days. Um, I guess I'll check back once I've finished something so I can wrap something up for you, but I guess that's it for now. Hi guys, it is Saturday, so I have today and tomorrow left of book two is on, and things are going very well. I'm <laughs> so pleased with myself. I think I mentioned to you guys that I needed to also read, in addition to my TBR, um, I needed to finish the Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. This is a graphic novel about a prince who likes to wear dresses and has kind of another side to him called Lady Crystallia. It's historical fiction, so it doesn't really have uh, modern day language, but I guess you could say that um, this character is gender fluid because he um, presents as a woman sometimes um, and sometimes as a man. And I finished that because my library loan was expiring so I guess I can just talk about that book here because I read the majority of it um, during book two -a-thon. Um I read, had read the, like the first third and I finished the last two thirds the other night. I quite enjoyed it. It was such a sweet story. The characters were so charming and adorable and like I just loved them. It's a really long graphic novel but I actually flew through it very quickly. I think that the words are more minimal so you're able to just kind of flow through it at a really quick pace. It was such a heartwarming positive message. It really is like an all ages comic and I loved it. Um, the only two things I didn't really like about it were that there is a very very upsetting um, outing sequence in it. Um, if that might be upsetting or triggering for someone, um, just be wary of that. It was, I don't know, really awful to read. I also shipped uh, something in this book that didn't happen and I was a little bit bummed that the relationships in this book didn't end up the way that I wanted them to, but that's just me I guess. I also really liked the art, but I will say that the backgrounds of the most of the pages were completely blank and I kind of didn't like that. The, the backgrounds were just so barren it was a little disappointing. But other than that it was a really solid read. I gave this like 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was so good. I also finally finished Let's Talk About Love by Claire Kahn. I feel like I mentioned a lot of my thoughts as I was going along with that book but when I finished it I just I don't know. I didn't love it. Something about the characters and relationships in this book just didn't connect with me like at all. I felt like a lot of the drama was forced in a lot of senses. The family dynamic in this book didn't work for me at all. It just didn't feel real or make sense and I didn't like it. It was underdeveloped and it was just a disappointment. If this book were like about straight white characters I really really wouldn't like it and it would be easy for me to just be like I did not like this book um, but I do think that the representation on this book was like so important and reading through Goodreads there are a lot of reviews especially like other own voices reviewers that it really worked for so I would encourage people to read this book because I know that it can work for a lot of people and I really want more books like this to be published. I really really like want this book to succeed because I need more stories like this. Like it's set in college which I really enjoyed. It has an asexual protagonist and it's really 
open about that. It doesn't like hint at it. Pretty much the main focus of the book is this character's identity and it's really important to be able to talk about that in plain terms. So like on a personal level, I gave this book like 2.5 stars. It was just very underwhelming and not really for me, but I just feel really strongly still about this book and I do hope that people still will read this book and I hope that it finds people that like it more than I did. I also finally finished True and Now by G. Neri, which again, this book just didn't work for me too well. I just found that this book was like kind of boring and forgettable and I thought it was cute and sweet. Like I have nothing really bad to say about it, but I don't really have anything good to say about it either. I wasn't really engaged with it. Nothing about it really stuck in my mind and I kind of just made my way through it and wanted to be done with it. I gave this book also like 2.5 stars because to me it was just completely in the middle. Like I didn't love anything about it. I didn't hate anything about it. It just felt like nothing to me and I'm probably going to forget about it in the upcoming weeks to be quite honest. I also just on a personal level don't really like stories set in the south and I don't like listening to southern accents in my audiobooks. I, it's just like a personal preference and I, I don't know. <laughs> it's not my favorite thing. And honestly, like I don't even have anything to say about it. It was a cute middle grade story and it was interesting that it was about like authors that I'm familiar with but as a book itself, it just didn't do much for me, personally. And then also, last night I finished Backstagers Volume 1. This is the graphic novel about an all-boys school and the techies that work in the theater. And this was so much fun. I obviously loved the theater setting so much. Um, that was my main draw for me for this book. I just got such a kick out of it. Any sort of like reference and language used that's like something that theater kids will get. I just loved it. It made me really happy, but I also just like, I loved this cast of characters. I think it's such a dynamic and interesting group of characters. I loved the relationships that were being formed. I thought it was just fun and quirky. This book has like this huge supernatural fantasy element to it. I don't even know what to call it, but it's something that you maybe wouldn't expect going into it, but I thought it was just weird and interesting and it felt kind of like a surrealist episode of Adventure Time in a lot of ways and I just found it very enjoyable and I gave this like a solid 3.5 out of 5 stars. I think that this could develop into a series that I really really grow to love right now. It's a series that I would say that I really really like but I for sure want to read the future volumes. And so as of right now the only thing that I have left on my TBR is I Know What You Did Last Summer by Lois Duncan, which I'm currently, I have a little bit less than an hour's worth of audiobook listening. So I'm either going to finish that tonight or tomorrow. I have a whole day left of this readathon. It's amazing. I also actually have started another book because I am so ahead right now. I've been listening to the audiobook of From Twinkle with Love by Sandhya Manan and I am loving this so far. After like reading True and Elle and Let's Talk About Love, I just like wasn't excited about either of those books and so I wanted something a little bit more enjoyable. Um, so I started this and oh my goodness, I love it so far. This is a young adult contemporary. It's told in diary format, which I wasn't expecting. I didn't know that this book was told in diary format until I started it. It is this character and she's writing letters in a diary to famous female film directors, which I love. I find this to be so refreshing so far. I love the main character's voice. It's like truly, truly bringing me back to the days when I was reading the Princess Diaries series. I am reminded so much of Mia and like the way that she writes in her diaries. It's so reminiscent of that and I'm just like, I'm feeling so nostalgic and so happy reading this book. I haven't read a book like this in a long time. I think she's so funny and I really like the romantic relationship that's starting to bud in this book. And Sandy Manon also wrote 
when Dimple Met Reshi, and I read that and I really liked it. Like it was a solid young adult contemporary. I had fun with it, but I didn't think it was anything amazing. But I think that this is so much better and it just has such a stronger voice. It's so much more entertaining. It's so, so good so far. I think it's like such a big step above that book. And it's really, really cool to see this author's like growth from her first to her second book. I'm really, really happy with this so far. So we've gone off track of my booktube on TBR, but I'm throwing this one in here um, because I've been reading it as well, a little bit over a third of the way through with it. So I'm not sure if I'm going to finish it by tomorrow, but I figured I would talk about that and mention that I've been reading that as well. I will, I will go back to I Know What You Did Last Summer. It's just uh, I have to wear the hat when I'm reading that book, which is so annoying. I honestly, I'm not enjoying I Know What You Did Last Summer very much. I thought it would be like this mystery thriller with a lot of tension. It's just not. It's pretty boring and I don't like any of the characters at all. <laughs> pretty much all the male characters are just like sexist and irritating, but whatever. It's short and I do need to finish it because it's the book that I have the hat challenge for, so yeah. <laughs> Hello guys, it is Sunday, the final day of Booktubeathon. And I actually have to go to work. I'm like running a little bit late. I have to go in like a minute, so I'm not going to fully wrap up everything that I need to talk about. But I will say that today I woke up and I was prepared to finish I Know What You Did Last Summer, but I just looked at it. I had an hour's worth of that audiobook and I just didn't care about it at all and I was like I don't want to finish this book. So I logged into my library account and lo and behold the first volume of Paper Girls I had had on hold a while ago. It finally came through today. So today I DNF'd I Know What You Did Last Summer and I read the entirety of Paper Girls wearing a hat. So I completed the final challenge that I needed to finish and now I am completely done with every challenge. I read more than seven books and finished every single challenge so I'll talk about my thoughts on everything later but I do need to go to work now and I think I have plans to go out with some co-workers after work tonight so I'm probably not going to see you guys until like tomorrow or the next day and I'll just fully wrap up all my thoughts later but I just wanted to check in it's the last day of Booktubeathon, and yay, I finished everything. Very exciting. Hey, I'm here to wrap up Booktubeathon because I never finished my full wrap up because I had to go to work um, on Sunday when the readathon was over. Hello, I'm back. Okay, so let's talk about all the books that I read during this week and the challenges that I completed and all that jazz. For starters, we have the book to movie adaptation. I read Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine and I watched the movie Ella Enchanted. First challenge done. Next challenge I completed was to read a book with green on the cover. I read One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. There is green on the cover. The challenge is done. Another challenge was to read a book about something that you want to do. I read The Backstagers by James Tenney in the fourth and Ryan Sy. Theater is something I'm always interested in doing, so that completed that challenge. Fourth challenge was to read a book with a beautiful spine, and I read True and Nell by Jean Neri, which has a very beautiful spine, so that completed that challenge. What were the other Booktubeathon challenges? This is embarrassing. Oh, now I remember. Um, another challenge was to let a coin toss decide your first read. I did a coin toss in my TBR video and it said to read Ella Enchanted. So that was my first book. Now I remember. Next to last challenge was to read a book while wearing the same hat the whole time. I started reading I Know What You Did Last Summer and I was wearing a hat the whole time. I got 60% of the way through that book and I just didn't want to finish it on the last day because I thought it was really boring and not enjoyable and I just didn't want to spend an hour of my time that day reading that book. So I DNF'd it and I very quickly found a different hat that was much more pleasant to wear than that stupid pig hat that I was wearing and I wore that hat I read Paper Girls by Brian K. Vaughn and Cliff Chang. This is a graphic novel about very young girls who are paper girls. They do the paper route. It takes place in the 80s, I think, and 
they're going out on the paper route and some things start happening. It's the day after Halloween, things are a little bit spooky, and things get wild. This graphic novel I did not officially wrap up, so let me tell you my thoughts on it. It was so much more, like, bonkers than I was expecting it to be. The plot of this like went just like off the rails. It was so weird. I thought that this would be a little bit more tame, a little bit more contemporary story with a twist, but no, it was just like bananas. I still liked this and I thought it was entertaining and intriguing and I did um, mostly like the characters in the setup and the ending definitely ended on a like a little twist that really really sets up the next volume to be something super interesting so i mean there is potential here i liked the art style a lot i liked the color scheme quite a bit and i pretty much usually find that brian k vaughn is a solidly entertaining writer uh, when it comes to graphic novels I do not think that Brian K. Vaughn is a good ally to the LGBT community. I've found that he maybe thinks that he is and does not properly execute aspects of his book in relation to queer characters. This is something that I have found to be an issue in pretty much every single one of his book series. And it's a little frustrating. So I'm honestly, same with like his feminism his he i think tries to be a feminist writer and he really has some shortcomings in that department so i liked this and i think i do want to read the second volume fun things about it i enjoyed it and it was an entertaining read and i do really like the art and i'm just i don't know i'm curious about it but I don't think it was like amazing and the plot of it like I said was just so much more bizarre than I was expecting that it just like didn't work as well as I thought it would for me but it was still decent and pretty good I gave it like three stars and then in addition to that I also finished the last two-thirds of The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang which I had started before the readathon. I also had started reading From Twinkle with Love which I got about halfway through during book two-a-thon. Oh and then I also read Damselfly by Chandra Prasad which wasn't really included in any specific ch challenge but it was part of reading the seven books. So that was the last and final challenge is to read seven books and I did that. So just to sum it all up, during the week of Booktubeathon, I read Ella Enchanted, One True Loves, Damselfly, The Backstagers, True and Nell, Let's Talk About Love. Did I mention that one as well? That was another one that I read. And then Paper Girls. I also finished the last two thirds of The Prince and the Dressmaker, and I read the first two thirds of I Know What You Did Last Summer before DNFing it. And I read the first half of From Twinkle With Love. That was that. How did I do this? I don't know. I didn't really participate in any form of a social life. As you can see from my blog, like what did I do this week? Not much. I was really just like hanging out by myself, taking small breaks of personal entertainment and enjoyment. I did finish that puzzle I was working on, which was exciting. I was very happy with that. And that's pretty much it. I participated in the Twitter sprints when I could. I always really enjoy those. I did one of the video challenges, so it was nice to at least do one video challenge. It's just a lot of work for me to put out a video, especially with 24 hour notice to think of it and put it together and edit it and everything. But I was happy that I was able to do at least one and yeah. That's it, Booktubeathon is over now. I have really enjoyed seeing everyone participating and it's always such a fun, rewarding readathon for me. I had a great time. I'm really, really happy with everything that I was able to accomplish reading-wise and I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later.